Alright guys, City have just beaten Wolves 5-1 and I mean it should be illegal for a footballer to be that good Kevin De Bruyne is just ridiculous Hat-trick of goals with your weaker foot inside the first 20 minutes of a game He strikes the ball better with his left foot than 99% of players do with their stronger foot That that's ridiculous. It, 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 it's, li it's literally like having a cheat code in midfield. Any time he picks up the ball on the edge of the box and like has got an area to shoot at on the goal, it, it, there's like a good chance it's going to go in. But you, you watch that game though, and, and I, I can help but think, like. The, De Bruyne is obviously ridiculously good but why in, in the game against Real Madrid has there never been an opportunity where he, he's had the opportunity to shoot at from just outside the box because it, it just didn't happen and like that, that, that if that had to happen on any occasion City would be in the Champions League final so it, it is a strange one, but I mean, what a footballer. And he obviously made it four with his right foot in the second half. But I, I genuinely think by the time he leaves the Premier League, he's going to be in the debate with Gerard Keane, Vieira, Scholes, Lampard. David Silva probably goes in there now. You can make a case for possibly even Cesc Fabregas. I, I think he has to go into that group of players. Yeah, yeah, too, Ray, even. He, just incredible as, as a footballer. Um, and, yeah, Sterling Stur got the fifth man city. Leander Dendonka scored for Wolves. Dendonka's goal, to be fair, was a, a good counter-attacking goal by Wolves. They brought the ball forward through. Raul Jimenez played it to Neto. And Neto squared it to Den Donker, he made the late run and he managed to squeeze it through Edison. Um, for De Bruyne though, the, it, it was the uh, the third goal he scored which just amazed me. The first one brilliantly taken, um, he's just uh, struck it hard and low with his left. Uh, the second one I think that's more of a poor error by Jose Sarr, Sterling is, leaves it. And Saar comes out and just lets it bounce off his chest straight into De Bruyne, which he, what on earth are you doing? And De Bruyne puts it home. The third one was the best for me. Just runs at the Wolves' defence and strikes it with his, his left foot. It, it just like I, I, I can't strike a ball that well with my right foot. It, it, amazing. Uh, it's just the power and uh, placement he, he manages to get on it. It's, it's, I, I haven't got any words to describe it. Um, and yeah, I, I went into tonight's game hoping that Wolves could possibly nick a draw out of it. Or failing that, at least keep the score down to like maybe a one goal deficit. But it is a four goal deficit and um, I can't see Liverpool overcoming the goal difference. I think if, if it goes down to goal difference, City will win the league. And it could do. If West Ham could get a result on Sunday, um, then, then it could go down to goal difference. I can see West Ham potentially getting a result. If I was putting my money on it, I'd probably still put my money on City. But I, I don't think it's impossible. But what we know now is that Aston Villa are probably going to have to get a draw um, on the final day for Liverpool to win the league. And that's with West Ham taking away something from uh, Man City. Because if, if both games are a draw, which is unlikely... Um, and Liverpool win both their remaining games, Southampton and Wolves, which you'd think would probably happen. Then Liverpool win the league, but that, that is still very unlikely, and I am clutching at straws here. Uh, so, I, yeah, I, I think there's an 80% chance now Man City are going to win the league. 
Um, so yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be uh, tough for Liverpool to win win the league now. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm gonna not not gonna give up hope. Um, strange things have happened, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I just really can't see it happening. Um, but I think as a Liverpool fan, the one thing that I will say is if we don't win the league this season, at least we lost it to a ridiculously good footballing side. Like um, Raheem Sterling's goal right at the end of the fifth one, it was just incredible. Um, the the one-touch football from Cancelo, Grealish, uh, I think De Bruyne was also involved, might, might have been, might not have been. Um, and Cancelo just runs a good 60 yards forward, squares, well, it's sort of a shot, but it gets deflected into the path of Sterling, who has a tap in. Sterling missed a couple of, like, nine out of ten times you should score chances, um, the, especially the first one where he clattered into the post. He uh, definitely should have scored that one, and also the one-on-one. -on -one. Definitely should have scored that one. He probably should have had a hat trick, to be honest. Um, but I, I still think Raheem Sterling's a good player. I, I, he, finishing, it just isn't uh, his strong point. He's, he's, he's not a deadly finisher. He, he, he's still a good goal scorer, but he's not. A, like if, if you put him in a side lower in the table, you get limited chances. That's not where he's going to succeed. But, um, in this Man City team, he, he does, does work well, um, and I, obviously there's there's rumours linking Sterling to Arsenal, and we, with City signing that they've got that Argentinian lad Alvarez coming in, and also at Haaland, so City are probably going to have to, I'd imagine, get rid of one of their forward players. And looking at it, you'd think it's one of Mara's, Jesus or Sterling to go. Because Grealish, they're not going to want to sell him. Foden, not going to want to sell him. Um, so, yeah, I'd imagine it'd be one of those three. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the ref gets one of them is getting a very good player. Uh, I think Rod Rodri and De Bruyne are... A, by far sees two most important players. I, I know Ruben Diaz last season, we saw the difference between uh, City without Diaz and City with Diaz. Um, but I, I also think um, the well, when they didn't have Diaz at the start of last season, uh, or, or the season the, the season before, in fact, 1920, they had the defence of Fernandinho and Nicolas Otamendi, who was having a shocking season. Um, so I think as much as Diaz definitely improved the C defence, I think it was more of a case of like a poor defensive partnership rather than um, poor, poor defensive partnership to a very good partnership uh, to, rather than an average uh, defensive partnership to a like ridiculously good defensive partnership if that makes sense um but yeah i i, I think c should comfortably win the league now uh, i'll be honest wolves though haven't been anywhere near as good since around january uh than like than they were at the start of the season they've a lot, they've lost a Dharma Traore on loan to Barcelona, so that that you could argue that that made a difference. Kilman's been injured a lot recently. He was very good at the start of the season. Samedo as well has missed a few good if a few games, so they have missed a few key players. But I still don't think they. Um, I, I still don't think they've. How do I put it? being as good as they should have been without those players, if that makes sense. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.